I'm Keith Callaghan. I'm the designer of the Hadron H2, and I'm, I'm having a series of interviews with various owners, um, asking them what they feel about the boat and getting some feedback. Um, today, it's Nigel Cowan, who um, in his early years raced fireflies when he was at school, and then later International 14s when he was at uni. And um, he, he returned to dinghy sailing after 40 years away. Um, which is some time, um, but uh, we know how things like professional careers get in the way and, uh, and various other things. So it was, it was not until a few years back that he came across uh, the H2 at Chichester Race Week and um, he seemed to like it from the start. I, I just wonder, um, Nigel, um, what is it about the H2 that, uh, that fascinated you at the time and, uh, and how have you got on with it since then? Hi Keith. Um, well, I, I was, as you say, coming back to sailing after a period of away, and uh, for some reason I decided to write a PhD in my 50s, so I, I was slightly on the heavy side of normal after, after that, mm -hmm. um, and uh, came back, and the thing that really impressed me about the H2 was the, the beautiful hull shape, and it was actually, the, you know, the classic lines, and it, it, the first look, it really just did it for me, so the hull shape was the thing that I found uh, initially very attractive um, and you know to this day you, you look at the the hadron sailing and it has the x factor and when I'm out sailing so many people you know the little chaps at the end of the jetty they go hey mister what sort of boat's that but it, it is a very very distinct shape it is a head turner isn't it yes absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. um and um being, being in sort of early 60s, I wanted something that I could pull up and down the jetty and that was light in weight. And mm. the, the H2 fulfills, you know, that criteria. So it's easy to get to get the boat up and down on the trolley. Yeah, we've, uh, got, a, we've got a lightweight uh, trolley as well as a lightweight boat. Uh, in fact, the trolley's so light that it floats, but uh, <laughs> which is a slight disadvantage, but it certainly helps up the slipway. So the boat and trolley, what are we talking about? Um, under 80 kilos. I've had to work out a system for tying the boat down to the trolley in, um, you know, very high winds. But I've worked on that one and I've got got a, something that that uh, works quite well actually. But I was looking for a a, um, a single sail, monosail, single hander. Uh, I somebody m my sort of stature would have had trouble finding a crew coming back after forty years and working and doing on call and commitments. I didn't want to disappoint a crew by not being able to sail in every race. So a single hander, single sail fitted the bill. And although there's some great boats out there, some modern boats, this, the, the Hadron for me looked the prettiest and it fulfilled all those criteria I've mentioned. And it was a hiking dinghy. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that is, is worth mentioning that the, you know, the key element to, racing speed in a boat like the Hadron is the ability to hike. That's why some of the younger sailors do so very well when they come to race the Hadron in their, in their uh, hiking ability, but we're all working on that. Yeah, so good. <laughs> well, you, you've, certainly, you've certainly improved performance over the, over the couple of years that you've had the boat, that's for sure. So it suits, the other thing about the boat is it does actually suit a variety of shapes and sizes. So mm -hmm. because of the, you can uh, manipulate the internal layout, you know, people have won races from 10 to 15 stone, or I've just done a conversion, it's 64 to 95 kilograms. So it mm -hmm. is suitable for, I think over 95 kilograms is pushing it a bit, but certainly 64 to 95 kilograms, um, it, it, the boat accommodates that variety in helmsman's weights. Yes, I, th I think we found that the um, the heavier helms really shoot up to windward and, and uh, gain a lot there, but they lose it to the lighter he lighter helms um, on the off wind legs. So it's it it really evens itself out around the course, which is which is a good thing. Yeah, I also found that the, you know the handling characteristics of the boat it, it really handles like a true thoroughbred. You know the tack bear away manoeuvres in approaching 30 knots, it, it does behave really properly. I'm still working on, on the bear away jibes. I think that's still work in progress in very strong winds, but that's me rather than the boat. Yeah, we, we, we tried very hard to, um, 
to ensure that there wasn't going to be any tendency to nosedive. It's, it's difficult to sort of say it's not going to happen under any circumstances whatsoever, but I think 95% of the time, um, in fact, I've never seen one nosedive. Um, and I've been out on the water watching them for, for several years now. Um, although I think um, Jim Hunt, when he sailed at the, um, at the Burkitt Trophy um, event that unusually was very, very windy um, three or four years back, um, he actually did pitch pole, um, but he still finished um, eighth overall. Uh, mm. uh, and most of the other thing he's capsized. Um, it was only the bigger ones that didn't. But that's the only occasion I've, I've heard of a, um, in, a, in a very extreme conditions, it was over four six. Um, I only, that's the only occasion I've heard of. Uh, well, I found when you do get in the tide, the boat floats in a position whereby you can get on the center plate uh, reasonably easily and then roll back into the boat as she comes up. Mm -hmm. So writing the boat, uh, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's an absolute pleasure, but <laughs> you, you can, <laughs> You can can write the boat reasonably easily or easily, you know, for somebody who um, uh, is, you know, having fairly um, dodgy shoulders. You can get back in the boat. Yeah, and there's two ways of entry as well: o over the gunnel, as you say, if if you're quick, um, or you can swim around the back and uh, pull yourself in uh, through the open transom very easily. Most of the time, I, I roll in over the gunnel. That occasionally. Yeah. If you go around to the transom, it, it, it is a piece of cake getting in, actually. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the heavier you are, the more the boat sinks and the easier it is to climb a pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I love sailing the boat. I you know, really enjoyed it. Um, I find it very exciting. It planes well, it tacks well, it jibes well. Um, I realise I've still got a lot to learn. My main aim when I sail is not necessarily to win the races but to sail well and, mm -hmm. and I'm still working on that but had a fantastic amount of fun racing the boat and look forward to getting out there again this year uh, with a bit of luck and if things improve. Uh, well, yes and you'll be in a new boat. Yes yeah looking forward to that yeah. Yes. One, four, four. <laughs> yeah well, uh, Simon is uh, just about to start building it actually so um, yeah it's uh, it's the next boat in the uh, in the production schedule. Can't wait. Well, thank you, Nigel. That's that's excellent. Um, I, I have to mention also that Nigel is is on the uh, Hadron H two class committee, and um, we are um, making this video for the uh, RYA virtual dinghy show, which happens in about a month's time. And uh, I hope you'll uh, watch this video. I mean, obviously, you have watched this video. And uh, you'll watch some of the others in the series as well at our virtual booth at the show. Thanks for watching.